So the next speaker for the day is uh, Professor Bose. Uh, Professor Bose is known, well known for his uh, you know, lectures, not only in India but around the world. And uh, in his current position, he is uh, actually uh, was, he's, uh, at the NSHM Knowledge Campus. And he was formerly director of two NITs. He has graduated about 32 PhD students, about 40 masters, one, and yes. more than 200 uh, journal publications to his credit. And uh, he is very respected, he's well known in his area. It's my pleasure to introduce Dr. Bose to the audience. Thank you. Good morning to everybody. Uh, before going to the paper, let me say a few words about this uh, research actually. It is done by my students, Sakshi still is carrying his PhD. And fortunately, his paper has been accepted yesterday, continuation of this paper in Hydrogen Energy Journal. I got the information yesterday. So, uh, he was supposed to come, but he didn't turn up, so I am placing his uh, paper. So this is the outline, I am not going to take about much time of this. But first of all the question is why you are going for mixing hydrogen with biodiesel. In fact, you know that uh, pioneering work been done by Professor Das uh, using hydrogen in the movable things that is car, auto, etc. But uh, still this hydrogen is uh, not yet we have produced uh, in a commercially viable way. Still the research is going on. So people, the researchers still trying for alternatives. I mean mixing hydrogen with someone so that our economy can grow up. And perhaps you know that few days back um, already announced by the, our minister, Mr. Gadkari, that we are adding 5%, we can go to 10% of adding biodiesel to the vehicles, etc. And in the fuels, you know, in the diesel fuel, we can mix up the biodiesel. So all this research have been carried out by different research scholars and the results are produced and they have come with this. So why this alternative fuels, what are the biodiesel besides gasoline, all this we are in searching of it, biodiesel, electricity, ethanol, there are different the list of alternatives. Now I am not going through the list of these alternatives. So why hydrogen fuel? Because we are also working on hydrogen at NIH Agartal. So, uh, after fossil fuels has become the fuel of the future because as you know as we explained by Professor Das, it is a clean fuel, no carbon dioxide and as per the, you know, as you know the greenhouse effect will be uh, less. All these things actually moving the researcher towards hydrogen. Now what is the global scenario? In fact, though we are talking about to reducing coal, etc., but still you see that Global energy scenario shows us 2007 to 2035, this coal is being increased by 1%, but this fuel, liquid fuel, run down to 30%. I mean, it is uh, up to 30% 30 from 30, uh, from 35% to 30%. That is a transportation fuel, you can see. So, these way you can say renewable energies goes up. Similarly, natural gas goes down. This way, the energy scenario is now throughout the world. Now, what OECD and non-OECD carbon dioxide emissions are we are giving some just scenario that these are the uh, these are the pictures that you see that total uh, uh, total uh, OECD and non-OECD and world total is going up from 2007 to 2035. Similarly, the world oil consumption is also going up from 2007 to 2005 that just Barchard has given here. I am not going in details and we are adding OH and uh, that part gauge is showing in this side. But now I would like to show you the some risks of biofuels, its advantage and disadvantage. Though we know this all this, but still we will have to have uh, some recapitulation here. Biodiesel has 10 to 11 percent oxygen, so which makes a high uh, uh, fuel, high combustion characteristics, reduce carbon dioxide emissions to near about 75 percent. In the life cycle, carbon dioxide emission in case of biofuel is almost nil. Sometimes we claim because you see that we, as we know, 
that uh, trees are absorbing carbon dioxide and whatever uh, pro I mean produced by using that trees oil will be absorbing by the carbon by the trees so naturally life cycle carbon dioxide is almost nil so that is the advantage reduced smoke due to free soot it has higher CTN number than the petroleum diesel biodiesel is a renewable etc etc these advantages are also there biodiesel has 12 percent lower energy as we know that calorie value is less it has lower volatilities it has used biodiesel can cause internal combustion engine may lead to a durability problem including injector choking problem etc etc there i am not going to the transestational problem already discussed by professor earlier in lecture and uh, deliver deliver so i am not going in details because because of time short just i am going to advantage and disadvantage of hydrogen fuel as mentioned by professor dash that you see that the advantage is first of all this doesn't carry any carbon I mean, in the in this chain. So uh, hydro, there is no question of producing carbon monoxide, carbon dioxide, etc. If we use pure hydrogen, but there is a problem of having NOx, because as you know that uh, hydrogen having high flame velocity, high flame temperature from air nitrogen, it can produce NOx. We all know that. That some of the reference I have given here is from our paper. And disadvantage, as you know, that uh, there is, uh, as explained by Das, that there is a backfire. But one thing, you know, people is having an idea that if we put hydrogen cylinder in our, uh, I mean, car, there is a possibility of uh, any time it can burst, etc. But one interesting thing that hydrogen, if it leaks, it will always move towards, towards upwards. So question of not getting entangled the whole car. But in case of CN, in case of other fuels, especially uh, I mean uh, LPG, etc., if we use most of the car now we are using LPG, there is a probability of engulfing the whole car in including the passenger. So that way, <coughs> hydrogen is a better option. So there is a non-edible vegetable soils there. I am not going to say different soils. So and we are going to see some performance results. I am skipping some of this. Hydrogen induction. <coughs> Why you have taken this? Because I have mentioned that hydrogen, completely using of hydrogen might be a problem because of it is not commercially available. So we can have an option mixing with biodiesel with hydrogen. So that was our objective in this particular presentation. <coughs> hydrogen induction methodologies, uh, hydrogen enrichment, hydrogen port manifold injection. Hydrogen in cylinder injection, that is, you know, the most of the work, time manifold injection done by Professor Das. So, we have done some work on this also and the hydrogen diesel fuel concept. So, some of the results I would like to go, uh, going to produce in this gathering, the results obtained by my students. Actually, objective was that, uh, that injection of hydrogen in different modes, I mean different four strategies we have adapted in this particular paper. The stat strategy 1, strategy 2, strategy 3 and strategy 4. So time duration is going to be increased. <coughs> Actually 220 degrees are available for from top dead to the bottom dead center for injection. So here we have I mean, divided this into 7,000 7, microseconds, 9,000 microseconds and 11,000 and 13,000 microsecond H4. So this four strategy usually as the time goes on increasing, so naturally <coughs> volume of hydrogen will be more. So see that what is the effect of this in case of MOA biodiesel. So that was the I mean objective of this study. This is the experimental setup he has made and it is a common setup. As you know, I am not going into details of this. This is a laboratory setup in Agartala. Now, result and discussions. Let's come to this very interesting point. Because whatever you have achieved practically, that effect on brake thermal efficiency or brake specific energy consumption or different emissions, that we are going to produce it now. With the hydrogen enrichment, diesel fuel having higher thermal efficiency than the base diesel. You see that there are D100, I mean 100% diesel. DH1 means 10%, 20%, 30%, and 
40 percent, uh, and just similarly biodiesel, 100 percent biodiesel, <coughs> accordingly 100 percent biodiesel with, sir, I mean increasing of hydrogen ratio. So the volume, I mean the hydrogen mass is going to increase from uh, this uh, another figure. So what we have achieved, biodiesel with hydrogen enrichment, so the higher thermal efficiency than the base diesel without hydrogen induction due to higher calorific value of hydrogen. I mean, suppose we have, uh, in case of diesel hydrogen and biodiesel hydrogen, that is the results we have obtained. With hydrogen enrichment for both the fuel, higher thermal efficiency observed for diesel fuel, this is due to higher calorific value of diesel than hydrogen. So similarly, this you see that from the chart also you can see this bar chart, that this bar chart also showed me producing that at different load. And very interestingly, from low load to high load, we are having that it is going increasing. In case of, uh, I mean, 40% diesel and 40% uh, hydrogen and 60% diesel, we got a good result. But you see that low load, this is almost not very significant. So this shows that in lower level, when hydrogen enrichment is going increasing, there is a lean burning and there is a, I mean, uh, due, to, due to that, this wet thermal efficiency will be going to be low. Then brake specific energy consumption. You see that brake specific energy consumption from the low load to high load, it is going down. And from 100% diesel to, uh, I mean, the addition of 100 diesel and hydrogen, and biodiesel and hydrogen, <coughs> both are showing that at B100, you see that B100 is, sorry, B100 is uh, this one, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, do it this. Next specific fuel consumption, you see that when it is uh, near about B100, this is specific fuel consumption going on decreasing. I mean, comparatively, it is less than the when it is hydrogen 40% and diesel is 60%. So, by base diesel registered the lowest BACC than the base biodiesel. What is the reason? Because higher viscosity and density of ester based fuel causes higher BACC. Similarly, with hydrogen enrichment, BACC reduces for both the fuel. Indicates that enhanced combustion because of hydrogen mixing, you know, it is always that hydrogen flame propagation is higher. So naturally, it is enhanced the propagation and ultimately it will help in both the cases. But <coughs> in case of diesel, comparing ester based fuel with diesel, Fuel under hydrogen enrichment, diesel hydrogen combustion shows the lowest BS, BSCC, but in compared to biodiesel hydrogen. Right? So, this is a big specific consumption studies. Similarly, NOx, NOx also, as you know, that always if you go on increasing the hydrogen, NOx will go up. So, in both the cases, NOx will go up. But there are different procedures, and we can arrange the NOx that we have done here. And NOx in both the cases is increasing. Carbon monoxide also, in case of hydrogen percentage when grows up, naturally as the carbon percentage grows up, uh, this hydrogen percentage grows, I mean, grows on increasing, carbon monoxide emission will be lowering in both the cases. But in case of biodiesel, it is better. As you know, the biodiesel carbon monoxide is less in compared to diesel. Unburned hydrocarbon, also same results we have seen that uh, this Moduka, I mean, I forgot to tell you this as Moduka biodiesel, Moduka is a forgotten, is a botanical name, we have got it from, it is a non adiable oil, on this we have produced biodiesel and we have tested all this with hydrogen. Smoke, that is the maximum suit was observed for biodiesel due to poor spray characteristics and mixing formation. For both the fuel hydrogen enrichment reduction suit was observed due to absence of carbon in the hydrogen. As usual, that as there is no carbon in hydrogen, naturally suit is also 
go on decreasing. The pressure, we have studied uh, some pressure and we have seen that in all the cases, strategy 4 is the best. I mean strategy 4 means 1300 millisecond duration of cure where hydrogen is continuously injection, injected. So here you see that different combustion pressure and very interestingly, the maximum rise in heat release rate 80 point, uh, sorry, 80.68 joule <coughs> cantangle was observed for biodiesel injection strategy 4, which is 27.8% higher than the diesel at similar injection time. So this result was observed very interestingly and we propose the strategy 4 is the best if we use MUVA diesel, MUVA biodiesel and hydrogen. So ultimately, these are the conclusions, some of the conclusions are this, <coughs> that the soot formation gives you surprisingly both the liquid fuel and hydrogen addition, but the peak cylinder pressure value was observed 85 bars for biodiesel with hydrogen injection strategy 4, which is 14.71 percent <coughs> higher than the diesel at the same corresponding strategy. So from this study, we can state or say that more the injection timing or the more the uh, addition of hydrogen, we, we got a good results, but there is a limitation that we will study further. With this I conclude, thank you very much. Thank you Dr. Bose for uh, an excellent lecture and uh, showing all the performance. I am particularly glad that you showed the disadvantages of using biodiesel because that is a topic a lot of people are shy to talk about. And that's extremely important because if you go from biodiesel to biojet fuel, for example, a long-term operation may cost deposits on the turbine blades. It may be very difficult to, to take care of or, or, or maintain. Right. So, and consequently, you showed other, other disadvantages also that not only opens an avenue to those who are doing research to focus on those and try to find solutions for those problems that will greatly help in continuation of this research to a, a, a good, you know, goal, reaching the goal. So that's extremely important and I'm glad that you brought it up. Thank you. So any questions for from the audience? Thanks for a very impressive talk. I have a small query about the carbon footprint, overall carbon footprint. For example, the recent uh, like uh, things about the carbon footprint of PV uh, solar photovoltaics supposed to be very, very high. How do we think is the biodiesel production would add to the carbon footprint of uh, fuel processing at least? Actually, you know, fuel processing has already <laughs> delivered by him biodiesel. Okay. So, uh, here I am not going to tell about whatever you are telling that carbon. Carbon footprint, right? So, how much of the energy yes. is contributing? Uh, actually, uh, as you, I, I think that you are going to mention that uh, Kyoto Protocol that carbon trading. So, in fact, this is also, uh, I mean, Government of India is also opening that chapter that we are reducing the carbon by using biodiesel and we are going to get out of it, benefit out of it. As you know, as per Kyoto Protocol, that we'll gain, if we can reduce a certain percentage, I'm not going in details, but as you have correctly pointed out, that biodiesel, if we can use, certainly it will reduce the carbon in the atmosphere. So that will be the great benefit for government of India and you can claim to Kyoto, I mean, that necessary benefits to come with the Indian government. So that is the, but exactly the amount, what exactly we are going to reduce in the life cycle, in the carbon, into the, uh, this, in the atmosphere, that needs a rigorous study and come out with some. I think so, you people are studying that one from Nili. <laughs> In fact, sometimes it becomes more attractive other than the, these aspects. Like photos uh, in the solar photovoltaics, uh, I think some of the studies suggest that it takes about six and a half years of continuous application of solar, solar photovoltaics to compensate for the CO2 which got generated during the production of the peak. So in this particular case, if the CO2 generation is less, that we can also project as an advantage. Is advantage this at all? And he also mentioned about the, you know, one of the disadvantages is yeah, the yes. smell is not as bad as the, you know, but it's not just not the smell. The compounds that, that come out of, uh, from the exhaust gases of a, a normal hydrocarbon fuel is so toxic you won't even realize that. All the mercury, NOx, SOx, unburned hydrocarbon, 
all these things you measured, but there are so many elements in, in, in very minor particles that not only go through your nose, go through ears, and now we find it also goes through your skin to conduction. And you know, you won't believe the, the consequences of that, that can cause deafness, that can attach to heart failure. All these elements can really make a, a nightmare for those who are exposed to it for a long time. So we just take it for granted. But possibly with the biofuels, all these can be, can be solved also. At the same time, we making it sustainable and uh, you know, with all the advantages. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you.